flight. These are John Glenn's ground-based co-pilots, men he knows well, with whom he's trained, and in whose judgment his life is entrusted this day. They are the flight controllers, and from the Mercury Control Center, within view of the launch complex, they make the decisions, issue the commands, that will govern the course of the mission. To these men throughout the flight will flood the facts needed for decision. The scope of their responsibility of the entire operation defies comprehension. Now, this very instant, the countdown for flight continues around the world, on three continents, on islands, in ships and planes, in lands where it's summer and tomorrow is near, in lands where it's winter, and this day is just beginning. Roger, how about you recovery? Uh, recovery is go. Roger, recovery. Uh, Roger, CTC, Mercury Control Center is go. Nymph Godspeed, John Glenn. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Across Africa, races Friendship 7 at 17,545 miles an hour, 300 miles a minute, four miles for every heartbeat of John Glenn. The first hint of potential disaster. It came when astronaut Cooper relayed a request from Mercury Control, asking Glenn to check the status lights for the capsule's landing impact bag. Glenn reports, status normal. But ground stations are now receiving an ominous chilling signal, an indication that the heat shield on Friendship 7 seems to have come loose. In Mercury Control at Cape Canaveral, a decision must be made, and soon. The signal pulsing down from Friendship 7 indicates still that the heat shield is loose. Could the signal be erroneous? There is no way to tell. But if it's true, then John Glenn could perish in a searing inferno when he plunges back into the atmosphere. The retro rockets that slow the spacecraft and head it back toward Earth are strapped over the shield. If they were left on after retro fire, instead of being jettisoned as in normal re-entry, then their straps might hold the shield in place before they burn off. They might possibly save Glenn from the 3,000 degrees of re-entry heat until he's deep enough into the atmosphere for its force to hold the shield in place. But the decision must be made soon. We'll give you the countdown uh, for retro sequence time, John. You're looking good. Uh, Roger, we only have five zero seconds to retrograde. Over. Uh, that's a firm. I'll give you a mark. 45 mark. California, uh, California. This is Cape Flight. Go ahead, Cape Flight. Uh, we'd like to leave the package on at least through Texas. So keep, tell him to keep his Retro jettison switch off. Uh, John, leave your retro pack on uh, through your pass over Texas. 20 Please. seconds. Roger.
back with John Glenn and Friendship 7 is lost. The furnace-like heat of reentry has created a barrier of ionization around Friendship 7, halting all voice communication. Uh, seven, this is Cape Transmitting Blind. Your IP is within one mile of the uprange destroyer. Voice call is Steelhead. Steelhead is the code name for the destroyer Noah, waiting to recover Friendship 7. But John Glenn uh, cannot hear the message. Right around 443 flight. It was about on time. Keep talking, Al. Uh, Friendship 7, this is Cape, over. Uh, Friendship 7, this is Cape. How do you read, over? Uh, All right, you're reading loud and clear. How you doing? My condition is good, but that was a real fireball, boy. I had great chunks of that retro pack breaking off all the way through. in reef condition at 10,800 feet and beautiful shoot. Shoot looks good. Hello, Mercury Recovery. This is Friendship 7. Do you receive? Friendship 7 comes to rest aboard the United States destroyer, NOAA. Today, John Glenn and the Mercury team challenge space.